Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is salmon. If you don't know, I have a great salmon site. I feel it's a great salmon site. It's called NoFarmedSalmon.com. And on that site, I present a lot of evidence, a lot of people's research, a lot of people's works, documentaries, videos, people that live in communities uh, where the salmon farms are happening. And the whole site is basically to educate people on the dangers, the possible dangers, the risk associations, the health associations. Some governments say don't eat farmed salmon at all, it's so dangerous, and reports on the toxicity load of salmon. So that site is to educate people on the possible dangers, health risks of farmed salmon. Okay, <clears throat> so today's mission is salmon. I pulled up an article, and it seems like certain chefs who are rena like renouncing their their Atlantic salmon, their farm salmon like ban. So chefs have, chefs, a lot of chefs throughout the last 10, 20 years have really made a big stance and said, you know what, I'm into sustainable seafood and I'm not gonna touch farm salmon. I did the same thing and I still do the same thing. We don't serve farm salmon at my restaurant. I wouldn't eat farm salmon. I wouldn't give farm salmon to my family. Um, I don't view farm salmon as, as a pure clean food. Now granted, the industry has taken long strides forward since the 70s. Um, what happened in Norway in the 70s was these salmon farms were abusing the environment, just abusing it. So Norway tightened up the regulations. So these salmon farms, these companies expanded into Canada and Chile where they had where they didn't have as much control or, or the government would let them do more. Um, back is sort of what they were doing in Norway. So you could, they could basically get away with more is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that kind of really didn't progress salmon, the salmon farming industry forward. It kind of like let them like go backwards a little bit because Norway was tightening up the, tightening up the rules and regulations. So, um, so salmon has gotten a bad rap. Um, since the 80s, since the 90s, as uh, farm salmon. So they have done things to, to make things appear to be more um, friendly, appear to be more sustainable, and some of them have come, have come a long way. Don't get me wrong, but it's still that I'm, I'm still going to make this point. It's like having slaves. It's like saying, well, we're doing sustainable slavery versus non-sustainable slavery. We're, we're gonna put five slaves per acre versus two slaves per acre. Slavery is wrong to begin with, right? It's just wrong, it's downright wrong. Or we're gonna use 12-year-old boys on the chocolate farm instead of nine-year-old boys. We're gonna use sustainable child labor, right? Okay, so there's no such thing as sustainable child labor, right? Or, or, or sustainable slavery, right? It, it's, it's wrong, it's unethically wrong. Well, salmon farming is wrong to begin with. It's wrong to begin with. So no matter, no matter how much, how much you've come, how how long you can you, you've progressed, it's still wrong. The concept of open net pen in the in, in in the oceans is still the wrong concept. It's like Joel Salton says: we take tracking sonar devices, we take these these satellites, and we try to know where we're going to grow corn for cattle, but cattle aren't supposed to eat corn. So the whole concept is wrong. We're putting all these energy, these resources in something that's, that's just not into an unsustainable to, or to a not logical project to begin with. So that's how farm and salmon is to begin with. So um, I pulled up an article from April 2014. Former critics of farm salmon like Rick Muin modify their views. Celebrity chefs like Rick Muin, a champion, champion of sustainable seafood, you go onto his Twitter. Chef, sustainable seafood ad advocate, is so what it says on his Twitter. Now he's been known for that for years, for being into sustainable seafood. Um, a champion of sustainable seafood long before it was a cool thing to do. I don't know how long he's been doing it. I've been doing sustainable seafood since 1997. I stopped serving farmed salmon in 1998. Stopped, um, you know, I was really conscious back then. When wild salmon wasn't in season, the chef would turn to sustainably farmed Arctic char. Now, Arctic char is farm-raised in closed containment, which means, you know, are there issues with closed containment? There's issues with all types of farming, but closed containment means that it's closed containment. It's not out in the ocean, so if disease happens, disease doesn't spread into the ocean. Wildlife can't come into and get stuck into nets and try, try to get, try to get in, in, into the open pens and things like that. It's, it's, it, it when you you purify the water after this after the fish are done living in it or do all the fish are living in it so you're not depositing tons and tons of 
of fecal matter, salmon fecal matter, or Arctic char fecal matter onto the bottom of the ocean floor. It's a containment system where the water recirculates. You take the water, you purify it, you use the water again. Nothing gets out into the wild, into the ocean. So that's the difference between closed containment and open net, just, just to give you a quick uh, rundown of that. Um, the changes in farm salmon industry have enough to convince Moon, Rick Moon, to, to not only serve farm salmon in his Las Vegas restaurant, but is the brand ambassador for True North Salmon Company, a farmed salmon brand with in Cook Aquaculture. So not only does he serve it in his restaurant, he's actually the brand ambassador. He's probably getting paid to serve it and to represent True North Salmon, which is Cook Aquaculture. Go to my website, nofarmsalmon.com, and look at Cook Aquaculture. Do, do a search for Cook Aquaculture in there. There... I don't understand what's so sustainable. I called Cook Aquaculture. I spoke to them. I don't understand what's so special about the salmon they're serving. This true. I don't understand what's so special about it. I don't know what would. Con is it, I don't know what would convince Rick Moon to switch salmon. Now, however, I've tweeted Rick Moon like four times. Please tell me what you like about the salmon. Please tell me what. I've, I've, I've asked a question. Please tell me more about the salmon. Please tell me what you'd like about the salmon. I've gotten zero responses. He's very active on Twitter. He's posting all the time. Um, but he hasn't responded to me. So I'm assuming, uh, what am I to assume? Uh, can he not answer the question or can he answer the question? So I, I don't know, but I'd really like to know what he actually thinks about why, why he made the switch. What convinced him on True North, on Cook Aquaculture, which doesn't have a good rap, by the way. Look, look at their stuff. I mean, I mean, what the, just, just take a look at my site and, and, and look. Even, even Google's Cook Aquaculture. And go on YouTube. You can find tons of videos of, of, of all the dead fish, that, 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 that the diseased fish, and all the kind of stuff that's going on at the farm, which, which is part of the problem of farm salmon. You're going to have deaths. You're going to... The most sustainable salmon farm companies out there, the salmon farms, the most sustainable ones that claim all this, this, and this, they have dead fish. They have diseased fish. It happens. That's, that's part of the industry. So how can you be sustainable if you're killing off millions of pounds of fish because you have diseases within your farms? How sustainable is, is diseases like that? Okay? It, it, this is the problem to begin with. You're putting salmon in too close of confinements. You're not feeding it what's supposed to be feeding out in the wild. You're, you're, you know, you're feeding it a combination of a soy, a grain diet, um, not the not the real foods. The fish don't don't have the migratory patterns. Um, it, it, the, like I said, there's a lot of issues with farmed salmon. So I would like to understand why Rick is picking this salmon and 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 turning into, you know, and relying upon farmed salmon um, at, for, for a menu sale. And, you know, he, I'm sure he still does serve wild salmon, as I'm looking at his Twitter. Copper salmon belly, the real deal. Of course it's the real deal, Rick. I'm looking at your Twitter. Of course it's a real deal. Farmed salmon isn't the real deal. I'm really, I'm really surprised, and I spoke to a couple other people in the industry about this, people that are into the sustainable seafood industry, um, and they were really surprised that Rick had gone um, and they said, I just saw Rick at the seafood show and this and that, and, and I'm really so, I had no idea that, that, that he was supporting farmed salmon and actually being an ambassador, a brand ambassador of one. Of the people were in shock about this. I'm like, yeah, look at the article. I sent the article to a couple people, and they were like, oh my gosh, I just saw him. I just saw him at the Boston Seafood Show. I didn't realize that. Well, yeah. You know, it, 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 what does chefs do for money? This is the question, you know. I mean, did they throw him enough money to actually sway him and say here's here's what it is now if you go to farmedandangerous.com they have a whole report because cook aquaculture true north claims that they're certified they're eco certified whatever it is you go and that <laughs> farm and dangerous and it pulls apart all the problems with cook aquaculture what's wrong with their certification how weak it is it's self regulated you know the, the, the certification they have basically means nothing it's a self-regulated certification for sustainability. I mean, any industry can just write their own stuff and say, oh, we're following what we wrote. And it's written to, the, the certification was actually written to please or to accommodate their own industry. So it's not like it's a third party, the, the, the standards aren't really public. It's, it's, it, there's a lot of problems with, with what their certification is. So I'd like to know. Um, from Rick Moon, what, what in the world is going on here? Uh, please tell me, convince me, please convince me about this salmon.
So I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thank you for watching this video. If you like my video, please check out uh, all my videos. You can go to foodfronttv.com where I expose chefs for lying about what's on their menu, for misleading you about what's on, their, on your menu. Um, and please go to my main channel, chefonamission.com. Thanks for watching.